the member for Jagger Jagger. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm speaking on this bill today because we need to do so much better for people with disability, their families and carers. The NDIS is a great labour reform. Unfortunately, its implementation has been bungled by this government's disinterest and neglect. And we've seen that reflected in the number of cases of neglect and abuse of people with disability. This just shouldn't be the case. The reports of the death of Anne-Marie Smith shocked our country. And while this bill is a first step in creating a stronger framework to ban providers, we need further provisions to stop the abuse of people with disability before it happens. We must also go further and address the systemic failures this government has allowed to develop within the NDIS. We should not be leaving people with disability vulnerable to providers or carers who do not meet the highest standards. We should not be leaving people with disability vulnerable to pandemics like the current COVID pandemic. We can and we must do better. This bill seeks to broaden the circumstances in which the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commissioner may make a banning order against a provider or a person. The bill also seeks to clarify the Commissioner's powers, and these are welcome changes, and they do address areas where the NDIS Quality and Safeguard Commission's powers are too narrow. But these changes do not do enough, and I support the amendments moved by the Member for Barton in the name of the Member for Maribyrnong. Of course, we need a commission that is empowered to act if abuse is found to exist. But we also need a system that means abuse is stopped before it occurs. We need a system where oversight of the care of vulnerable people is baked in from the beginning. We've just seen in our aged care system during this pandemic how it plays out when a regulator does not see itself as having a preventative role and I am concerned that the NDIS Commissioner remains in a similar space. Every person with disability deserves to feel confident that the care and support they are receiving is of high quality and will keep them safe. And I'm very concerned that the changes in this bill do not go far enough to ensure that. Currently, the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission has monitoring powers under the Regulatory Powers Act to enter premises voluntarily to ensure the Act is being appropriately administered. And if refused entry, a monitoring warrant can be applied for. However, the number of times these powers has been used has not been recorded. And this goes again to how the Commission sees its role. It's clear the Commission is not exercising the full extent of its proactive monitoring powers or its powers to penalise non-compliant providers. Under the Morrison government's watch, the Commission has received more than 8,000 complaints about the abuse, neglect and even fatalities of Australians with disability. And yet from all of these complaints, the Commissioner has issued just one fine, one provider banned and only 22 individuals banned. That is despite thousands of complaints, thousands of tip-offs. Something is clearly amiss here. Deputy Speaker, we have already heard about the harrowing case of Anne-Marie Smith. This just should not have occurred. Adelaide NDIS participant, 54-year-old Anne-Marie Smith, died on April the 6th of severe septic shock, multi-organ failure, severe pressure sores and malnutrition. The NDIS package included six hours of support per day. And it's since been reported that she only received two hours of care and had been confined to a cane chair 24 hours a day for more than a year. Her death launched a South Australian police investigation into the carer and the SA government created a safeguarding task force to examine the current gaps in oversight and safeguarding for people with disability. And finally, this government was prompted to commission an independent review into the NDIS Commission's regulation of the provider of NDIS supports and services to Anne-Marie Smith, which was established and conducted by the Honourable Alan Robinson, SC. I said this government was pressured because the review was established following public pressure and calls for, from Labor for an independent investigation. 
And my colleague, Labor colleagues and I have, have continually argued that this should have been a broader inquiry. That as we heard from the member from Bar for Barton, it should also have looked at what went wrong in the case of David Harris, an independent an NDI participant who was found dead in his house for more than two months after his supports had been cut off. The inquiry should have been free to look at broader considerations, such as whether the Commission has in fact been a toothless watchdog across multiple cases, not just that of the Smiths provider. Whether the funding cuts this government has put into the scheme, the $4.6 billion worth of funding cuts, means that we're having more deaths in home by neglect because money, the regulation is just not there. The investigator should have had subpoena powers and disability advocates should have been much better supported to engage with this process. Despite these flaws, it's clear from the inquiry's recommendations that the Commission, NDIS Commission has not been set up properly and that NDIS Minister Stuart Robert has failed to fix this despite these tragic cases of NDIS abuse, neglect and death. The inquiry, in fact, does not identify any failings in how the Quality and Safeguards Commission carried out its functions around Anthony Smith's death. But this is because, of course, the real reason the Commission didn't fail is because the Commission's scope is too narrow. It is not taking on a preventative role. It is only empowered to act once abuse has happened. With its 10 broad-ranging recommendations, the inquiry report clearly shows that the Commission and the NDIS safeguarding framework is not set up to effectively protect people uh, who use the NDIS. The report highlights buck passing between the NDIA and the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission. The problem is that the NDIS Commission only regulates providers and the NDIA is set up to administer the scheme to participants. And the report rightly highlights that the two agencies are not sharing information and that people are falling through the cracks of this patchy oversight. So the government must respond as soon as possible to this inquiry report and implement its findings. We don't have time to waste. Anne-Marie Smith died after years of neglect on April the 6th, 2020. It's now the 6th of October, 2020, nine months later, and we still do not have the steps we need to make sure that this will never happen again. I referenced earlier how part of uh, what we're seeing at the moment has the potential to reflect what we've seen in aged care during the pandemic, where a regulator doesn't see its role as having a preventative uh, role in supporting vulnerable people, but rather comes in afterwards to try and fix up a mess that's already created. We know that this government was caught off, off guard by COVID. We know of the damage that COVID has had on our aged care facilities because of this. We know the Morrison government had no COVID plan for our aged care facilities. And likewise, the disability sector is still without a comprehensive government plan or support for how to deal with the pandemic. We don't see the COVID contagious, contagion rates, our locations and deaths for people with disability. The system of reporting is just not there. And again, this goes to oversight and regulation. It goes to safety and quality. It goes to people with disability, their families and carers, being able to be confident that the people that they let into their homes, that the people they rely on for care are people who can be trusted and who will provide them with the highest standards. That is not an assurance they can have at the moment. And unfortunately, it's not an assurance that this bill gives them. I've heard about these issues uh, in my own electorate during the pandemic from disability providers, and, and they themselves are worried about the lack of planning, the, the lack of support that seems to have gone into this from this federal government. Providers have told me that they don't feel supported through this pandemic. They were expected on their own to close or readjust their services to try and meet demand in a safe way. And these adjustments were unfunded by the government they didn't get extra support for COVID plans and communication systems they needed. Not all participants were able to adjust to new systems and new ways of working, meaning uh, some participants have been left unsupported and providers have been left without income. 
Uh, that loading that was available to service providers through the end has seized on the 30th of June 2020, despite here in Victoria still experiencing a very severe COVID outbreak. And so providers are having to meet an immense cost of PPE. They're having to support their workers. They're having to try and do the best by people with disability, all without the support they should get from the federal government, all without a system that has the right level of quality, safety and oversight that vulnerable people with disability deserve. It's not a cliche for us to say that as a society, we should be judged on how we protect vulnerable people. People with disability deserve choice and control. They deserve an NDIS that works for them. But they also deserve to know that the care they get is of the highest standard. And as I've said before, that is not what this bill delivers. It is not what we're seeing happening under the NDIS Quality and Safety Commission. And it is very concerning and remains very concerning for people with disability, for their families and for their carers. It remains concerning for providers who want to do the best by their clients and by the people who they support, that these frameworks aren't in place as they should be. They're concerned that this government has dropped the ball. They're concerned that there hasn't been the action taken since these tragic deaths that I've highlighted to change the way that the system is regulated to the extent that will mean we are taking preventative action, that we're not waiting for tragedies to occur, but that people with disability, their families and carers are assured that the system is set up to do the job it should, to keep them safe, to make sure that they are getting the highest possible standards of care. We should not have a system where people have to die for an investigation to, have to take place. We should not have a system where neglect has to occur before someone is found to be unfit to be working in it. It's time for this government to take more action. It's time for it to take this issue more seriously. This bill starts the process. It does not finish it. And I urge the government to make sure that it goes a lot further than what we've seen today.